Personal Power, People Positive, The Community of Connection. This is the Bob Jeswald Show. Well, you know, David Richards, uh, uh, you know, author, uh, extraordinary guy. And as we talk here, learning a lot about who you are, which makes sense. It's kind of like when you think of the movies, Black Hawk Down and things like that, and you, you see what you did over in Somalia, and we appreciate that. And now you're discovering how to live a more fulfilling and adventurous life, um, and, and through a book that you're that you're doing, and uh, you know, as a strategist, is a, a lieutenant. Would, would you retire as out of the, major, major? Major. Oh, wow, good yeah. for you, sir. Thank you. Gosh, wow, yeah, absolutely, yeah, fantastic. Um, your, I'm sure your military background plays a big role in, in a way. If I'm safe in saying that, to uh, be your own star in your own movie, and I'd like to be a star in my movie in my everyday life to improve my life. So, how'd you come up with that concept? Is it something you just always thought about? Not really. So when I got out of the Marines uh, way back in 2006, um, I had such an interesting journey as a kid. I grew up in Japan for a few years. My dad was stationed over there and getting that exposure to Eastern philosophy had a really big impact on me. So I started trying to meditate when I was like 13 years old and my friends would be going out to football games on weekends and I was sitting in our living room trying to meditate. So I took that with me into the Marine Corps. And um, when I got out, just through happenstance, I took my first yoga class. I never, I couldn't have told you where yoga studio was while I was on active duty. But that weekend uh, that I got out, I read a Sports Illustrator article and it said NFL players used it to strengthen their midsections. So I'm like, let me give it a shot. And I got into yoga and it kind of just transformed my life. And part of it was dealing with what I dealt with being in the military and just that exposure and experience. But it was also the chaos kind of I'm working, I went into work for a fortune 500 company and just the volume of email and noise that came with working in corporate America was tremendous. And so yoga was kind of this place to be still and really start to orient and get centered. And it was also a pathway towards writing. And that was something that I'd always wanted to do since I was in high school. Um, and so what ended up happening was I realized that yoga is really, there's, there's something to yoga. There's a reason it's been around for thousands of years. Yeah, It's like acupuncture, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah. this, it's this philosophy about how you observe life and how you interact with life. And so that inspired a couple of my books. And just as I started working on this last book three years ago, three and a half years ago now, it was, how do you, how do you really come up with a process or how do you look at life in a way that you get persistent, meaningful value, and you don't get overwhelmed by all the information. Because now we have, I mean, you know, we talked about it earlier in terms of our age, but we grew up in a time when you did not have the abundance of information that we have today. Oh, it's and it's staggering. I mean, mm -hmm. we have more information available at our fingertips than presidents did 20 or 30 years ago. Think about what uh, could have been done or perhaps even strategically, you know, as far as fighting wars or doing any battles in our own lives or whatever you may be. You, you, it's a, it, it really can almost self-diagnose. Careful. you got to be careful with Dr. Google. Yep. But we all know that it, it kind of points you in a direction. And if you if you, you do it with an open mind, you'd be surprised at how much you can you can be fulfilled in just doing a search. It's it's crazy to have all that. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I think with any of us, like you use, which I find fascinating. Do you think when you were in the military, when you got out of that, it's that noise, a busy world was after me, so I went and found my own kind of thing. I'm stealing a line from Steely Dan here, by the way. <laughs> I recall when I was small how I spent my days alone. It's called the Caves of El Tamero. It was, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, Fagan yeah. and Becker wrote it together or something crazy. But I think of that, too. You know, that was my senior quote. And that's the only reason why I was able to say it. Nice. That I used to, and I wanted to be an actor. I'm being serious about this. And I literally, everyone in high school knew I did plays and everything, drama and theater. It was my way of expressing myself. I felt most comfortable on stage and, uh, and that, you know, people kind of accepted me. And, and back in those days, I, you know, we didn't talk about people's gender or, or whatever race, but it was, it was kind of like we were the, um, I don't say the island of misfits. It's a terrible thing to say, but we were, we were different. Um, and even, even me, I'm a, you know, you know, just, typical straight kind of guy. I was with everybody, but everybody accepted you when you're on stage, you know, and I felt pretty good about yep. that. So that song, when I heard, you know, I recall when I was small, how I spent my days alone, the busy world was not for me. So I went and found my own, I would climb a diamond wall with a hand, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It goes on. But yeah. in my head, I picture that as a, like a movie. So when I saw your book, I see, you know, here we are, David Richards, you know, writing this book, you know, kind of starring in your own movie in your mind. I, I don't know how many people out there too. I literally, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but sometimes I pretend like songs go through my head 
or sometimes I pretend I'm in a movie and I'll look in that mirror, just cast for a second and just think, this is my life. I see the credits coming down. <laughs> so now I have to act the part. Um, so is, is that sort of what I'm doing is this would be finding my inner self, my inner peace, get away from that, that noise, so to speak, like you said. Abs- absolutely. And it really, I mean, for me, it came down to this idea that I want to own my entire life. And what I found, what was interesting when I made it, when I shifted out of the military was in the military, you are who you are. And we mm-hmm. used to say in the Marines, you're a Marine 24 hours a day. doesn't matter when you take the uniform off, you are still a Marine Corps officer and you need to act that way. And so it was kind of this constant vigilance that you had to be who you were. And what I found when I got out was people compartmentalize their lives. Gotcha. And what I mean by yeah, that I is see that. Yeah. people come into the civilian world and they start the, you know, come into work and this is who they are. But then they go out and they party with their friends on the weekends and they're a completely different person. And what I started to appreciate was that's a divide in our like soul. That's a divide in our life. Like it's not I normal. Wanna be, yeah, it's just not yeah, I, I want to be the whole, pro- I want to be me the entire time. And so when I kind of looked at this, again, this deluge of information that we have available to our fingertips, it was how do you take control of that so it doesn't take control of you? How, so you don't go to doom scrolling on Instagram for 25 minutes or an hour because you're just caught up in it or looking for Facebook likes or whatever the case may be. And as I stepped back, it made me appreciate that I like I want this movie that I'm in to last as long as possible. And it's how do you look at all elements of your life and have an impact on the people around you, but do so in a way that you understand what your journey is. So you understand Mm -hmm. what your story is. You understand who's writing the script because most people outsource their script to uh, religions potentially could be the government. It could be a corporate environment and you kind of have to regardless. And I'm not saying anything, any of those are necessarily bad, but regardless of your belief system, you have to reconcile that belief system yourself at some point. You have to come to say, okay, this is what I really believe. And how do I make that work in my life? And how do I provide impact and value to other people, which is going to fulfill me because I'm serving others. Are those your cast of characters in your in your movie, so to speak, when, as we're talking about this development? I mean, who you surround yourself with? Who, who are the people yep. around you? I mean, that's, that's kind of, how do you choose that? I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. I mean, how many times I... You know, who you're around makes a big difference. I see some people, yep. and it's funny, people do compartmentalize all the time. I see it in here. It ain't real. And and in that person who wants to be around somebody who's doing this all the time, I, I want to see Richard's, the way Richard says, yeah, some of yeah. your guys you served with are going to remember you. And as you said, once a Marine, always a Marine. You still act a part as a Marine. And, and as a major retired, you, you have to be behave a particular way if you're around folks. But you're still... You're still Richards. You know, when I talked to you, if you didn't tell me you're in the service, I, I, I guess because I'm around a lot of guys who serve and women, so I kind of get it. I could sort of see your discipline, but but sometimes you're not. And I mean, you're you're very down to earth and, um, you know, just, it, it, you know, so so be that who you are. But but now we got to get the right cast around us so we can exactly we can do this in the right way. Well, and that's the and that's the beauty of it. What I came to appreciate when I first got out, I was around a lot of veterans, and that's because that's what I was familiar with. But I saw if I wanted to, and the veteran community at the time, you know, back in the early or mid two thousands, was there was this weird disconnect because there was a sort of this distant relationship that corporate America had with the military community. Right. And part of it was, well, how do we make this easier? Like we have value, we have skills, and not to put too fine a point on it, but we serve the country and we want to get rewarded in the sense, or at least accepted into the community that we served. And so there was a huge shift and transition to supporting veterans more actively. But I also realized, especially because I grew up in the military, oh my God, the civilian world is huge. Mm -hmm. Like the, like we have a fraction of a percentage of the population that serves in the military. And then there's like 99% that doesn't serve and may have never served in the military. And it was just like, wow, what does it mean to be not in the military? And I started to realize that there was a quality that I could associate with the people that I surrounded myself with. And I know that there are people say you, you become the five people you surround yourself with. And what's great about that today is you can find mentors online. You can, I mean, you can look at YouTube videos of people who've had tremendous success, whether it's Jim Quick, whether it's Tony Robbins, but all this information is available to you. And so as I looked at who I was spending time with, I was realizing there's a familiarity and camaraderie that comes from being in the military because you have that common experience. But I wanted more from my life. I wanted more of that experience. And so I started to look at, okay, well, 
who are people that haven't been in the military and what can I learn from those people? Because that's a different experience for me. And so you start to look at who is my supporting cast? Are the people that I am surrounding myself with challenging me to grow or are they keeping me in my comfort zone? That's a good point. And in, in the book, you're how, how you're just kind of like your uh, practical four tip, how to guide. You mentioned five right there, but you know, inner work, do the inner work. Tune into your soundtrack. I, I love the the phrase. I love this because it's it's everything about being a movie. Hey, we're the the what do you call Hollywood of the South now here in the state of Georgia. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, we can all be our own star, right? Uh, learn how to surround yourself with a supportive cast, as we're talking about now. Challenging to grow and inspires you to be your best self. You know, pay attention to the props you surround yourself with. I love that line. I love that, and discover the power power of your environment. Your environment is those that you surround, but is this for anybody? So. You, you particularly use the military as, as kind of like your environment that you're accustomed to try to, to transition into kind of, let's just say, the, the, the civilian life. But for somebody else who wasn't in the military, didn't have a, a specific MOS that, you know, like me, I, I was a bus driver. I did this. I did that and the other things. But the military, you did, you know, your job was specific, too. You were through, through I don't want to say a curveball, but as a Marine, you know how to assimilate quickly. But when you were thrown into Somalia and the next thing you know, you're getting off, you thought you had a different mission. Next thing you know it, hey, you're confiscating guns. <laughs> it's like, what the right. heck is going on here? So, I mean, what, what, is this applicable to, it's kind of like you're saying, it's applicable to anybody. You just got to figure out who your props are that you're going to surround yourself with. Is that Absolutely. safe to say? It, well, it's, I like to look at it as if you're doing the same thing week after week, whether it's in your job but if you do the same routines on weekends, you're hanging out with the same people, then you're living in the land of reruns. And oh, I love that. If you, yeah, I, lo- if I, get you, I love that line. Yes. <laughs> if, you want, if you want to change your life, you need like all, to me, what I've come to appreciate, especially working on this book for the past three years was progress equals happiness. Growth equals happiness because I don't like I don't want to experience the same thing over and over again. And that's kind of one of the big takeaways I have from the military was growing up. I did not like moving all the time because I wanted to be friends with people. I made, I like, I poured myself into friendships and this is well before FaceTime and text messages. It's all we had. I mean, it's all we had. Yeah. You couldn't communicate after it was like, goodbye was a goodbye. Now you could be anywhere and still keep that friendship going. Exactly. So we like, so I, I made best friends and then those relationships were obliterated kind of not to put too fine a point on it. And I didn't want that. Like, I didn't want to join the military until it was like, you have to pay for college some way, like figure it out. And initially it's funny because my, um, my roommate and I, uh, his dad was a Marine too. And he joined the army ROTC program at Penn state. I did Navy. And then after like half a semester, we're like, let's go to the Marines. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but but well, anyways, I realized, there's a lot of, there's a lot of tension there. I feel <laughs> the yeah, army yeah. guys get around Marines and Navy. It's too funny. I love it. Um, but what I realized was I trade, I didn't want to do what I ended up doing for a living. Like I professionally made myself do what I'd grown yeah. up resenting kind of. And it took me a while to understand, wow, I could, I could do something else. Like I could do something else. I could be something else. And this is my opportunity to grow. And I remember getting out. It was terrifying. Like it was <laughs> like, I had no, I, cause I just, I had no frame of reference for what civilians were. Like I accept the people on the other side of my window on who I was protecting. And it, it's a big change, but ultimately what I came to realize was the beauty of living like you're leading your own movie is you get to organize your life. And at the same time, you're taking accountability for all of your life. And that was the big thing that really resonated with me was I'm accountable for this entire life, not just how I show up in one environment or how I show up in the other environment. Like I want to show up as me everywhere I go. And so people get the real authentic me. I love it. You know, the only reruns I like, <laughs> David, is like Love Boat, uh, the Brady Bunch. <laughs> those nice. Are, those oh, are binging. Those are binging old school reruns. Now you that know our age. <laughs> I don't mind that. But but you're right about that. I mean, it gets it gets kind of cumbersome. It gets mundane. I mean, work. <clears throat> what I do for a living is different every day. Um, you know, doing weather is my primary uh, income. So uh, on TV, it, I can make it different. I can make, it's my show, it's my stage. 
stage, I, I can be creative as I want to be to try to give that information. Yeah, weather could be mundane and simple, but I'll tell you, when I was in Las Vegas, when I was in Arizona, we, we talked about those areas that we, we love, um, Mojave Desert and the Sonoran Desert regions, the weather's very consistent. I mean, you can almost predict it, you know, by month. You, can, you don't even need a farmer's almanac. You, you can tell. So you have to be creative and try to figure different ways out what you can do. So, you know, getting out there, I would, I would surround myself with people to find out, you know, some cool live shots or, or something that would bring a new element. Because I had a news director tell me one time who coincidentally was a Marine uh, and Chris McDaniel is his name. He was a news director. He retired out of Kentucky years ago and, and the television business became a news director, hardcore nuts and bolts kind of guy. He was a Vietnam vet. And I remember him saying one day he went in there, he dressed that newsroom down. Every time you open your stinking, I'm being nice now for the podcast. Every time you open your stinking mouth, Jeswald, he goes, it better have some useful information. I don't want to hear just a bunch of just hot air blowing around. You open your mouth, give it so somebody at home can say, wow, this is a water cooler element that I can take to the office. You know what Jeswald said today with his co-anchor? So he was, yep. that always stuck with me, how certain people do that. And that was a little bit of military you know, tough love. But again, you, you, you do have to, there, there's kind of, there's so many transitioning programs for people that serve in the military to come into civilian life. And, and you're right, it's difficult. I, I happen to have two guys on staff, a retired Navy guy, 20 years, uh, Brian, who's our meteorologist, and Greg Majeski, who's Army. And um, it's interesting because they both are, are so reliable. I mean, that's the one thing I'll say about the, the military men and women. It's like, you know, you give them a time, you give them a date. They want specifics. Spe- yep. And that's cool. I mean, I'm like, okay, and over communicate this, this, and that, and he'll still communicate. You know, the day before, Bob, are we still on at 2300? I'm going to be leaving. Blah blah blah. This time, and I, I personally love that. Is there any? Do you think there's anything wrong with that? You could still take that frame of reference of what you did in your old job or vocation, absolutely. as you transition. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I was I was so blessed that I got two master's degrees while I was on active duty. Smart. One of those good, good, good one good of those was a super cool program called the School of Advanced Warfighting, where we had two PhDs on staff. We had a Marine colonel and it was 24 students. And we studied the art of war for 12 months. And we went to Vietnam for 10 days to study battlefields. We went to Europe. So it was fascinating because it was you realize they used to call the army and the um, air force have similar programs. I don't think the Navy does, but they called those people coming out of desert storm. They used to call those people who went to these programs, Jedi Knights, because yeah. they would sit, okay. they would sit, on, they would sit on general staffs and help them campaign plan and everything else. And so, I mean, and it was interesting when I first got out, I kind of distanced myself from the military, even though I was a veteran, because I wanted the exposure of what does it mean? Like, what are civilians like? Could I, I mean, ask it, you it, before you go, I, why do they do it? Cause that just, you just got my curiosity there. My neighbor's the same way. It's like, he doesn't even want to go on post anymore. I never really asked him, but why, why do you distance? Is it because of that? Or what was it? You just, for me, for me, it was because I, again, especially because when you grow up, at least for me, when I grew up in the military, you know, living on bases and we lived on bases for all but four years, four years when I was in kindergarten, we lived um, outside of the uh, University of Maryland. Uh, and that was a that was a very different experience because the houses didn't look the same. Everyone wore different clothes like sure. you can see all of drab uniforms that everyone wore on their way to work. And it was a very different experience. But when you have that experience, like for me, I wanted to know what is it? what does it mean to be civilian? And I just, to interact with people who had no frame of reference for the military was fascinating to me because I like, I just wanted to learn from them and learn that, Oh my God, you can do these things. Like you can, I remember I, I was probably, I'd been out for three years and uh, I was watching this guy, um, a good friend of mine, Greg, who was a, a salesperson and he bought a, I remember he bought a um, Aston Martin, on eBay. Oh, wow. Like, that's an early day. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, like for, for like $70,000 70, or something. Or no, I'm sorry. It was, it was a Maserati. It was a Maserati. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. But for like $70,000. Yeah. And I like, I was just naive because I was just like, you kidding like, me? Did, yeah. Did you pay like, did you pay for that with credit? And he's like, no, that's cash. And I was like, like, oh my God, you just dropped seventy thousand like, dollars, and 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 that's before I really trusted the internet. You know, before yeah, we were just yeah. eBay was oh, yeah. the only way. There was no Amazon then. None of that. You know, that's crazy. So think, it, yeah, it just it, it's not uh, it's not any sort of antipathy or hostility towards the military, but it's just a curiosity for me. It was just huge curiosity. What does it mean to be on the other side of the military fence for the first time in my life? I love it, and and see, and that's. 
it could be scary. I can't imagine because I'm civilian. I never, I, like we were talking about before, I never served. But I love serving in a capacity with helping people kind of get into that. And I would love, I mean, even like with what we're talking about today in, in, in your book, and this this is like really good. I mean, this could be some ways to help somebody, anybody, it doesn't even have to be coming out of the military, to take this unique approach that, that, you're, that you're taking here today to help others sort of make their movie uh, out of something that might have been mundane in life and trying something different. It's, it's really, it's, it's, it's taking that chance too. There's so many people that don't take the chance. There's nobody yep. who, there's people in relationships. If you're out there too, I know there are so many people that were putting up with the same thing. It's like their movie is a repeat. It's like Groundhog yep. Day over yep. and over and over again until you just pick up the bootstraps and, and, and just do it. But, you know, there's there's got to be a method behind it. Some people just don't have the courage or afraid. And it's like, I guess, why, why the heck do you think people are afraid to do it? That, that, is it? Is it from fear? Do you think this has come from fear? Or is it just, it has to be. What the, Why would you be, why wouldn't it's the, it? Yeah, it's the fear of the unknown, right? I mean, yeah. that's, what stops, that's what stops everybody. Because when you get into a job, especially if it's, you know, depending on the work culture, but it could be a place where you're, if your job security is a concern, and certainly in America today, layoffs abound. Google's done layoffs. You know, IT, the whole IT sector has done tons of layoffs, and so that gets people alert. And so you get really focused on pres- preservation, and so you stay like in this secure zone, but you're not going to necessarily grow in that way. And so we all have dreams, and you talked about it earlier about the soundtrack and. You know, you mentioned Steely Dan. I'm going to see Taylor Swift with my daughter this weekend, but I grew up with Motley Crue, Kiss, Bon Jovi. You know, I got into my later years, I got into Tool. Like Tool is one of my favorite bands. And I still love their music, but I'm also appreciative of you have to be very mindful of what you listen to. And I'm not just talking musically because that's part of the soundtrack too. But okay. also if you're listening to um, media outlets, that is going to, you know, if you do the same media outlet day after day after day, that's going to paint your picture of the world. And that's going to tell you, this is what the way the world is, instead of kind of figuring out the way the world is or how you want to see the world. And that's ultimately the internal journey is kind of the scariest one because it forces you to say, instead of looking at the stuff around me or the stuff that I want or the stuff that I don't want in my life, how do I kind of find my inner compass to say, this is who I am. This is how I'm going to contribute. And that takes you, when you start asking those kind of questions, it takes you down a different path because then it started, you know, I know it's going to be afraid because I am stepping into the unknown, but I know that all I need is within me now. And I'm going to undertake this hero's journey. And it's kind of like, I, you know, one of my favorite series of films is the Lord of the Rings movies from I don't know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, whenever it sure, was. Yeah. And in some ways, if you watch them back to back to back, which I haven't done for a long time, but it's a long, it's like nine hours of movies. But at the same time, it makes you appreciate that's kind of what the hero's journey is. Like mm-hmm. Frodo picks up this little ring and then he has to take it all this way. And that's, you know, regardless of what you think your life is, when you start asking yourself, you know, what are my dreams that I've held on to that I've either neglected or just haven't been afraid to pursue? the pursuit of those dreams is where your destiny lies. And you just have to have the courage to step into that. And I don't mean to make light of this at all, but I was just thinking for me, I, I love shallow hell. You know I mean? I, I yeah. actually watched that over and over again. And Tony Robbins, speaking of which, yeah, yeah. but I, and I don't, I'm not, you're your own person. You know, I just want everyone to know that, that, you know, you are your own guy, but you do have kind of like, I like your delivery and style. Like, a, a little bit like Tony Robbins, a little bit. I, oh, I, I kind of hear, yeah. What a compliment. Yeah, oh, my gosh. It is, yeah. I'm sending yeah. you a Christmas card. Oh, hey, like I'll take a Christmas card <laughs> with a good I, message. If you send me a Christmas card, I want a copy of Love Letters to the Virgin Mary. As a Catholic, I, I know that's... Oh, little, absolutely. Some, I, I heard it's controversial, but I know before we wrap this up, the thing that I find interesting about that, you're not afraid to kind of press those little buttons to push a little bit to get people what they need to know. And it's in your books. And, and, and when you say it, what happens when you discover you're a God with a small G, so people understand that, yep, that would yep. be the controversy because people think you're, it's not blasphemy or any of that, but, but tell me about just encapsulate the letters to the Virgin Mary. What, what a love letters to the Virgin Mary? What, what would that, what is that? If you were to tell people what, what yeah, is it getting so, out of it? Um, well, so per the Bible story, when yeah. Mary finds out she's going to give birth to Jesus, yeah. The angel Gabriel says he's going to be the son of David. And historically, people have said, well, that's the lineage of David. And so, but but Jesus talks a lot about David in the Bible. So I kind of looked at it as, okay, well, what if that's a love story? What if King David 
was resurrected after 3,000 years and found or saw Mary in the real world, and what would that kind of under what would that undertake? And the whole premise behind gods, and I don't want to give too much of the story away, sure, sure. but I will absolutely send you a signed copy. Yeah, is uh, there's a couple references in the Bible to says we're all gods, and the first one is in the Psalms where it talks about um, there's a council of gods, and the the Most High God is looking down and says, you know, the gods are walking on earth, they know nothing now, they're going to die as mortal men, and that's that. And then Jesus repeats that kind of same phrase that. You know, doesn't the law say you're gods? And so during the pandemic, I had this really cool idea how to tie, like, is there a story that Jesus's father, as King David being resurrected, could tell through modern history? And um, with my military background, my understanding of ancient Rome, that kind of thing, I started playing with some really powerful ideas. And it was this idea that King David resurrects to awaken everyone to the fact that we are all gods. And it's, uh, but ultimately that's the most beautiful gift is you get to define, like you get to discover who you really are inside. And that's the method you're using behind this. This is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. people know that. I mean, I, I, I dig it. I really love it. Um, Thank you. What you're doing. I mean, this is fantastic. I, I mean, I'm hoping everybody can check it out because this is it really basically it's, um, you know, Become a star of your own movie, and just by providing a practical four-tip how-to guide, and and that is with our, our author here today, uh, and, and of course, Anne, our retired major uh, of the Marine Corps, still a Marine, David Richards, Semper Fi to you and uh, all, your, all your men and work, uh, but check it out. This is a lot of fun. We're going to put a little connection, a link to the bottom you know, to your, to your site and that people can uh, look at these books and see what's going on. But what a unique approach. I, I love the way you delivered it. The style has been great. And, um, you know, for the number one international best-selling author and speaker on personal development, this may be the way to go. So, uh, you know, check it out and, uh, let's see what you can do. And, and, uh, hopefully we're, we're going to talk to you more again uh, about how we can, uh, formulate our own movie and see what's coming up next. Will it be a sequel? Uh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> uh, Bob, thank you. It's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. This has been such a fun dialogue. Uh, and I can't believe how much ground we covered in just a short period of time. Uh, I am working on a sequel and uh, I'm, I would say probably 75% done with the first draft, but uh, that'll be coming out later this year. Yeah, you just keep moving. I love it. It sounds great. Well, stay in touch with us. Uh, and thank you again for uh, all you do and uh, your, and your service too. And David Richards, uh, again, you have a terrific day. And folks, uh, remember, be the star in your own movie today. Check it out, and you can do just that. I like a song. You know, my you like the Steely Dan reference. I, I like that. <laughs> I did. I did. So, well, thank you so much. Take a look at us here on Apple, iHeart, Audible, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, of course, right here at WRBL.com is your video portion, and on YouTube, too. You can check out this. You can see uh, both of us sitting there jibber-jabbering. I shaved my beard, but I should have kept it just for you, David. <laughs> Have yourself a good one. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. God bless you.